Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back with the long-awaited Snowed AD80 Dumbbell Teardown. A few months ago, I had purchased the AD28, tore it down, we took a look inside. Snowed had seen that video and offered up a single AD80 to tear it down, compare it to the AD28, and talk about any uh, pros and cons that I see in this version of the dumbbell. So that's what we'll do in this video, but first... I'm going to talk about the uh, exterior differences and things I do and don't like about the AD series of snow dumbbells. The AD28, the most obvious difference is the red adjustment ring and blue background on the uh, numbering. The 50, I believe, also shares that red ring. The AD80 has a black ring. It's just aesthetic. There, there is a difference internally, but this is just a color difference aesthetic. The numbering here is silver with black numbering. If I block the light, you can see it. And of course, it's very reflective. Not the best choice for a material here. This one's a little bit more readable. But even this one, I, I don't think I would have chosen the blue background against the black numbering. But I'll talk a little bit about how you can customize that. Uh, later in this video. The knurling is very passive to me. Uh, you may like it. It may be just enough for you. But if you look at the knurling on these, it is pretty passive. And that's pretty common for the adjustable dumbbells. You can see it here on a Newell bell, also passive. And you can see it here on the AD80. And it feels like a high grit sandpaper, uh, something like a 120, 240. If you look at my grips, now this is a grip I make for power block. You can see the difference in the knurl depth. This is a deeper knurl and it has more bite. It feels more like a traditional barbell. So this has, uh, you know, a great grip, but this is a bit too passive for me and you know you may find it passive as well. The base is the same. It's cast iron with these steel inserts. The steel appears to be mostly aesthetic. They, they it doesn't really seem to serve any other purpose. Uh, it may provide some sort of reinforcement, but it looks to be mostly aesthetic in both bases. These are very heavy bases. They're very well made. And, I, you know, you would expect that from cast iron. Cast iron is pretty popular in fitness, uh, in, in plates and stuff like that. One of the things I like about that is with adjustable dumbbells, when you fully load them, so when you select the maximum weight, some adjustable dumbbells, you'll go to lift your dumbbell and it will lift the base with the dumbbell. And you end up having to hold the base and pull your dumbbell out. And, you know, for to do two-handed dumbbell exercises, that's a bit cumbersome. These heavy bases don't seem to have that problem. You can lift your dumbbell out and the, the base will remain on the surface. So, you know, that's a positive when you have a heavy, well-made base like this. Now, oh, one of the, the things that... Um, you will see in review videos is the way that the people adjust, adjust the weight. Oftentimes, you will see them grab the ring and adjust the ring on their dumbbell. You don't need to do that. One of the things that I like about these adjustment rings, and you can do it with two fingers, or you can do it with uh, just your thumb, is... You can hold the grip, just extend your thumb, and move the weight setting. Same here. So you can adjust this thing from min to max with your thumb while never letting go of the grip. Or you can use two fingers if you want to or need to and, and do the same thing. But it's as smooth as butter, and I love that. So it's not all that different if you think about it, then twisting the grip, right? Here you're doing this, and here you're flicking with 
your thumb. Great way to adjust. The 8080, one of the big questions that I had received uh, from quite a few people was, is there a difference in that telescoping rod? And the answer is yes. So if we take a look here at the AD28 nylon with a steel hollow tube. And this is a solid aluminum piece. Now I should mention that older versions of the AD80 had this style. So some of you may have an AD80 that has this style of telescoping rod. Now, I haven't asked the manufacturer yet, but they may be interchangeable on your AD80. So there's a possibility that you can obtain these and just install them into your AD80 that uses the old style telescoping rod. So I will find out more about that and see if that's something that can actually, you know, be, be done. Is it important? As I will show you shortly, I, I don't really think so. I don't think that the metal rods on this are going to be that much more durable than the plastic because of the way that the plates are designed. So we'll get into a little bit of that after I disassemble the dumbbell. So we're going to take this base off of here and we will flip this back down, take this base, put that there. Now, you can also see by the way that they are basically similar. You know, this one has, they both have the dovetail system. They have three exterior screws. This one, if you recall from the previous video, has three more screws underneath this plate. They've done away with that. And it's actually uh, an improvement. I'm glad that they did away with that. This one does not use the three additional screws. The holes are still there. Four screws, but there are no screws and you'll see why shortly. Okay, so. This uses a five millimeter. On the AD28, it's a four millimeter. We take off our three main screws. And there are a couple details, very important assembly details that I'll go over when we're putting this thing back together. It took me a couple times to figure it out. There are some key differences between the way that this one is designed and the AD28. So you've got three screws. This is cast iron and all of the plates are just a simple one piece cast iron. This is the only plate that has an insert in it. All of the other plates don't have it. In fact, let me show you. So the other plates are just, you know, one piece of cast iron. I like the simplicity. If you look at something like Nuo Bell, it's got all this additional plastic and mechanism, and you don't really need that. It's just a nice, simple plate. Uh, Pep and Fast is probably, uh, you know, another one. Uh, iron Masters, they all use kind of this nice, simple one-piece plate, and you're familiar with that. Of course, all your barbell plates are going to be just like this, unless you happen to have uh, milled steel. So the next, oh, on this, you're going to see two keys, okay? And those two keys correspond to the keyways in that uh, telescoping shaft. Okay, now the next part should look familiar from the previous video. It's a molded plastic part. Same two springs with locking button. And that button, if you recall from the, the other snowed teardown, when you move it like this, when you put your handle in the base, the base presses here, pushes this in, 
it disengages the wheel and allows this wheel to turn so that you can adjust your weights. When it's out of the base, this is in the locked position and it prevents this wheel from being turned. Next up, you'll notice that this has plastic gears. Now, I think it's important to say that I don't need, think it needs metal gears. I wish that the video, the original 3D animation that Snow used to market these, did not misrepresent these as metal gears. I thought that they were all going to be metal components because the 3D animation showed what appeared to be metal gears. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, and that's not the case. It could have just been something simple like the, the person doing the animation thought it looked cool and they decided to make it look like metal, but they really should have shown it as plastic. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. These gears don't need to be metal. It's not like an axle in your car. If this was driven by an engine and there was a lot of force involved, then I would say step up to a stronger gear, maybe a composite, maybe a um, steel gear or you know, uh, anything that, that might be able to take the additional forces of being driven by an engine. But this is just being rotated with your fingers. And in fact, I showed you earlier how easy it is to just flick this with your thumb. So these are not under any kind of force that really demands that they be metal. The other part of this is that if you recall on the um, AD28, the shafts of the um, the shafts that are holding these gears in place. Of course, my fingers can't get in there. I'll get that after. I'll show you one of these. Let's see. There we go. The shafts are nylon, and that's fine. Again, they're not under any kind of stress that would require these to be metal. Now, if you remember in the AD28, the way that they did this was a screw went down through the middle of the gear, through a metal sleeve, and into this uh, cast metal part. Here, they just sit this axle into the recess and the gear is placed on that shaft. So, And that's fine. The, this I think for this application that that's going to work fine. So let's take these three out and you can see once again, this is just nylon uh, gearing. Next up is this ring. Now you gotta, you need to be careful here. In the AD28, there is a ball spring detent here. No, no uh, separate spring and ball bearing or any of that kind of stuff. It's just a ball detent for some reason. On the AD80, they decided to use a spring with a little plastic part, a tiny part. And if you're not careful and you lift this ring, that part's going to go flying. I really hope that they change that back to what they were using before. A ball spring uh, detent is, is, is perfect for it. It's great application. So what do you need to do? You need to put your finger over the window here so that nothing can pop out of it okay so put your finger over the window and lift this ring gear now you can see why i did that because inside there that is a spring and a tiny plastic part that part that went flying on me the first time I took these apart because I was expecting this to be a ball spring uh, detent and it wasn't. So be very careful with that. And I hope they change it back to the old way because that, in my opinion, is much better. So now, oh, I'll leave that there for a moment and we'll get it after. The next thing is this nylon gear that comes off the center shaft. Now, there's one here and there's one in the other side here. These also have keys 
that correspond to the keyways on this plastic housing. So the shaft is aluminum. The housing is nylon. We're going to now lift this out of the assembly and you're going to see the other half of the shaft in there. Okay, half is here, half is there. We'll set this aside for the moment and we'll take a look at this. So, you have a milled barrel cam. Notice this slot, one on each side. The way that it ends like this here, and then it goes all the way out this end. This is your outer end. This is your inner end always. This nylon piece has a rib, uh, uh, almost like rifling, that matches this. And frankly, it's you know pretty pretty smooth operation. It doesn't need any kind of lubricant. Nylons, Teflons, they all tend to be sort of self-lubricating, so to speak. And you can see how easily this thing rides in that groove. Now, there is no stress because of the design of the dumbbell. There is no stress on this plastic part. So there's no concern about this shearing off. This is not like on the new Obel. Very different uh, design, very different use. This is merely a guide that ensures that this barrel cam can rotate and turn rotational motion into linear motion. That's the whole purpose behind these pieces, okay? So, we've got that. If we tip this over, we now have our other shaft and our other half uh, of the telescoping shaft, also aluminum, same grooves, and they terminate there. That's your inside. And so that's how these go. Now, yeah, I, if you put this in backwards, so right now I have it this way. If I reinstall it this way, it won't work correctly. It needs to be installed in the same way that you took it out so that when you turn this dial, right, and you're turning it clockwise, or sorry, counterclockwise to increase the weight, that turns this in a very specific direction. And it is not a, uh, they're mirror images. They don't go uh, or move the same. So if I flip this this way, what's going to happen is as I go up in weight, it's going to adjust this rod inward down in weight. Uh, so just make sure that you put them back in the same way they came out. Now you can see one of the limitations of this style of design is that you can only have a dumbbell of a certain size, right? So when this is fully extended way out here, now you're limited. You can't get any more length out of this because at full retraction, it's only half of your whole inner uh, distance, right? So that's one of the limitations of these designs. You can't really just turn this into a 100 pound dumbbell. In order to do that, you'd have to have a longer handle with longer half shafts that extend out longer to grab more plates, or you would have to make the plates larger, which means that your increments 10 pound increments would no longer be 10 pounds. They'd be whatever the new larger diameter, heavier weight increment is. Okay, so that's our inner shaft. Um, the rest is just a mirror. This is uh, a tube that's pressed into cast parts. And you can see they flare the tube. And that locks it into place. On the AD28, they were using a set screw over here. It doesn't exist on, on the AD80. They're just flaring this tube and locking these together. So this is basically one solid piece. Uh, and it weighs, I'd say, two, three plus pounds, just this you know portion of it alone. So 
let's put this aside. Notice I'm careful about which direction these need to face so that I don't make the mistake of putting them in backwards. Other side, we take our same, same setup, similar, similar. Well, you'll see the difference in a moment here. And now, you know, same insert, same keys to match the keyways on the shaft. Same plastic part, but notice this one has the button and springs for your locking mechanism. And this one is the same part. They just don't install anything. They don't really need to install anything on this side. You'll also notice there's nothing inside except the one uh, gear that matches the gear from the other side. So the last piece is this, an iron ring, cast iron ring. And it basically functions like the sister to this ring. It's a spacer on the other end of the dumbbell. I, I don't see any other purpose for this other than properly spacing so that this gear can fit in this assembly when everything's put together. Okay, so that's the final handle. And again, you know, very passive neural. Uh, I wish and I hope that they come up with a way to uh, give this a better neural. And I, I could say the same thing about Parablock, um, Newobel, and all the guys out there that are doing uh, knurling on adjustable dumbbells. They all seem to choose this passive knurl. Part of the challenge is that this is a tube, whereas mine is solid stainless steel, right? So when you're trying to knurl this, it requires pressing into it and cutting the knurls into the surface. And so there's two big tools and the tools press from both sides to knurl this part. That requires a lot of force. And on a hollow tube, you really can't use that kind of intense force. Plus it's not as thick. So the surface of this tube is just not as deep, not as thick, but there are probably ways to do it, to give it a better neural. So hopefully they'll, they'll come up with some way to do that. Okay, so um, internally, I think that the gears fine. They don't need to be metal. They're not under any kind of serious forces. I think it's just fine as is. I do wish they would have shown in the animation plastic, not metal, so that, you know, we all know what we're getting. This is an interesting part compared to the AD28. I think I like the AD28's ring better. This one doesn't have a metal insert in here. Now, does it need it? Eh, not really, because it's, you know, plastic riding on plastic. And even if this broke or, uh, you know, sheared off, you would still be able to use your dumbbells. It just, it wouldn't make that, you know, click, click sound. So this is basically, this part is basically going from groove to groove and going click, click, click as you're turning your handle. If something were to happen to this, even if you lost this part during an installation, you'd still be able to rotate this, but it just wouldn't make any sound to indicate the different weight settings. The uh, numbering. One of the cool parts about this, and I was taking a look, it's a decal. It's definitely a decal. You can see the seam right there. You could peel this off make your own new decal with your own numbering, your own colors. Let's say you have a some sort of vision impairment, some sort of color blindness. Maybe you could use a color combination that works better for you. Let's say that your vision isn't all that great and you want to use bigger numbers, bolder numbers. You could do that. I wish that the company would get rid of this silver because as you can see, the silver reflects light. And so unless you block it, 
you can't really see that number very well. So I would make this a matte white background with black numbering in bold and bigger numbers. The biggest numbers that you can possibly fit and still see them in this window. And then, you know, if they don't do that from the factory, you can make your own and just kind of customize it yourself. You'll have to find someone that can print on vinyl for you. But, you know, you can find those kind of sellers on places like uh, eBay. Okay, so let's uh, do a couple things. This can be tricky to put back together. And um, <laughs> there, I, I'm, I'm going to end up having to fiddle with a few things here as I put back this back together. So it may take a little longer than I'd like. I've done this now four times. And each time, there's always some little thing that I have to redo. So we'll get to that in a minute. I just want to show one more thing that I think is important. And that is the way that, let's see, one sec here. I'm going to show you something about the shafts here. Did I flip this around? It'd be funny if I flipped it without real. Yeah, I did. See how easy it is to mix up these parts? I accidentally flipped this upper plastic piece in the other direction, and it needs to be in a specific direction. So please make sure that you're aware of the orientation of, of these inner pieces, okay? But let's say that this extends all the way out to its maximum, which is going to be something like this. One of the things you're going to notice is this. Now, it's not too big a deal in that it's not going to be a super high precision part, right? There's going to be some play. Part of that is in order to make things move to, to be able to slide, but also it costs a lot of money to do high precision machining and parts. The higher the precision, the more expensive all the components. So you have to find a balance. And I even do this with my own stuff that I sell. I have to find the balance between how precise do I want the part to be and how expensive for customers. So in this case, you know, this is going to have some play. And what you're going to notice is uh, in a couple videos, people will talk about the sag, the sag. When they lift their dumbbell, and the weights kind of sag slightly from the center outward. Not a lot. It's just a, a very slight sag. But that's because of that play. This is basically, when it's loaded, it's basically going to bend down slightly. Or not bend, but it's, it's basically moving down slightly at its ends. So just be aware of that. It's not a big deal. It doesn't, it, it may aesthetically not necessarily please you. But in terms of function, it functions just fine. However, after when I have this together again, I want to talk about what I think is a potential weakness of this dumbbell as a result of doing it this way. Okay, so we've got that. We've got this one. And we know that this needs to go in with this side up after, okay? So we're going to put our ring on the keyway like that. Okay. We're going to start with the opposite end, the end that doesn't have the window. Okay. Slide this through like that. Then we're going to put the gear on the other end, and notice I'm doing this horizontally. Okay, like that. Now, what I've been doing, and it's imperfect, this is, you know, I've tried a few things. This works sort of okay for reassembly, but I use this as a base because this is protruding, right? And I need to put this upright to work on it. 
So I'm just going to put it upright into that like this. And now I can work on this like a little stand uh, while I work. Put our ring back on. This always goes opposite the block of metal here. Notice this looks like a flower. And here is the block. That's because that corresponds to the number window on this side of the dumbbell. This corresponds to the locking pin button on the bottom of the dumbbell. So it needs to go opposite. So we slide that on. And when you do, you're going to feel it lock into place. Because these little shoulders recess into these parts of the casting. Okay. Now you take your plate and your dove tail goes opposite the button. So the dovetail is on this por portion of the dumbbell. Okay. Now I do this sort of like fastening lug nuts on a wheel on your car. Don't tighten just one down and work your way. Uh, go around in a circle and tighten them gradually so that you don't accidentally cause one to be um, kind of, you know, you don't want this plate to be cocked to one side. You want it to sit evenly, right? Let me move this to the center. You want it to sit evenly with the rest of the dumbbell. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to pick this whole thing up and do that. Now we've got this side. Now this is a little tricky. Um, <laughs> I've almost lost this a couple times. Again, I really snowed. If you're watching, put the the uh, button detent back in here, the, the ball spring uh, bearing detent in here. Don't use this. This is just too easy to, to lose. And it's uh, frustrating because now you've got to get this back in here. Now, the best way to do this would be with maybe a pair of uh, nose pliers. Uh, let me see if I have one. No, I don't have one up here. But, you know, if you have long nose pliers, you can hold it like this and put it back in. But, you know, many of you may not have that and you're going to have to do it with your fingers or do it as best as you can. The way that I've been doing it is trying to drop it into that spot. And it doesn't always go as planned. You can see, you know, when I drop it in and it didn't go in. One of the other things that I have tried and sometimes it works is I move the spring outward like this. And then I hold it into the outward position so that you can kind of see it there now. And then that gives me an opportunity to put this in the top of the spring like that and then release it. And now you can see that that's down in there. Okay. But now you need to slip this past that, right? This needs to go over it. And you want the number 10 detent, this one, to be lined up with that. So you're going to put this like this, okay? But you're not going to push in yet. What you're going to do is use something, anything uh, blunt to push that button inward all the way and then press this down into place. So I basically, from above, you can see here, I'm going to push. Oh, it's already slightly popped out on sec. I'm gonna have to pop that back in again. This is this is where I say, you know, snowed, don't do this. You know, 
the button detent is beautiful. It works on the AD28 wonderfully. So keep that and use it on your AD50 and 80. Okay, so we've got 10. We're gonna line it up. We're gonna push this in and push this down. Let's see. Like that. Okay, so now we're back in place. We've got our 10 back in place. Let me rotate this around. And just for orientation purposes, I've got the window here. You can do it any way you want. Now you need to drop these back into place. The easiest way to do this is to just take these axles and put them into their pockets, okay? Now, you don't want these to be to, uh, cocked to one side or the other. They need to be straight, parallel with the handle, okay? So when you're putting these gears back on, you can't just put the gear any old way. You want to carefully orient this gear so that the teeth here and the teeth here engage here as smoothly as possible. You don't want it to be too far to one side or the other. So I lay this like this and I just start looking for the two teeth that seem to fit the best. And you'll know right away, because see, as soon as it, as soon as you find the two that are going to work the best, it drops right into place. It's it it works beautifully. Now that shaft is correctly parallel to the center shaft. Same thing here. We're going to just kind of see if we can find the two teeth that work the best. There we go. Same thing here. Look at that, it dropped right in. You know you've got it lined up perfectly when it drops right in like that. Be very careful with this part. It's very easy for this thing to come dislodged and those two springs to go flying. Uh, you could probably replace them with something from a local hardware store, but do you really wanna go through that trouble? So just be very careful. If you're storing this on a table, it's actually better to store it this side down, but uh, just as long as you don't you lose them, you know, tape them if you have to. Oh, and notice, uh, I was saying earlier that the AD28 had screws going through the center of the gears. This one, it has the pockets, but no longer uses the screws. Instead, these plastic shafts have shoulders that go into this pocket here, okay? So you're going to put this in so that this is opposite the window the block and when you do it will drop into place it will you can feel it all of those shoulders are now uh, in the proper position then you've got your dovetail and you want your dovetail to be opposite your button what you're going to need to do though the keyways need to line up with the keys okay so you're going to put these in like that, but then you're going to rotate this until the holes line up. And you'll notice that this dovetail is now opposite the locking pin button. Drop these in. And by the way, it didn't go this smoothly the first four times. <laughs> the, the, uh, the number of mistakes that I made in order to figure out what was going on and the uh, differences with the AD28, like that spring that they put in this one. Oh, I really, I don't like that. That just makes this a less pleasant, um, you know, portion of the install. But it's, it's an easily remedied thing that, uh, you know, they could even provide to customers to press into their own dumbbells after the fact if they wanted to upgrade them. Uh, so that 
is now the fully assembled handle. Okay, now we got to test this baby out. So let me grab the base. And we want to make sure that we're working. Now you may notice, there we go. Yep, okay. <laughs> That's funny. I just, this is a good teaching moment. <laughs> I told all of you earlier how important it is to make sure you put the center shafts back in the way you found them. And what did I go and do? In all of my talking, I put them in backwards. And here's how you know. And this will show you. I am going down in numbers 60, 50, 40, <laughs> but the shafts are extending. Okay, so the, if this were to happen to you and you make this mistake that I just made, take it apart and take this whole assembly, these two pieces, and the nylon tube and flip it 180 degrees problem solved put it back together again and it will then properly go uh, extend out with the numbering i'm kind of glad <laughs> it, it's funny that it happened but i'm glad that it happened because this will ha it now has shown you how easy it is to put that thing in backwards and there's no markings there are no markings on it that I could tell that tell you which way to put it in. So just be careful and don't get distracted like I did and put it in backwards. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Flip it 180 degrees, put it back in, reassemble the way that I did, and you'll be in business. So <laughs> uh, it's a pretty easy installation. It's just, you know, there are a couple little things that you have to keep in mind when you're doing this. I'll reinstall that all after. I'm not gonna do it on video. This is already a long video. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm gonna talk about a couple final things. Uh, one is that I had asked, uh, when I had the AD28, so let me bring that back up here. When I had this AD28, I had asked Snowed, can I get replacement parts? And they said, yeah, you can. You know, We don't think any are going to break, but yes, you can get replacement parts if you contact us. They don't have a, an inventory in the U.S. And I think in part that's due to the fact that they, they just think that they're not going to really have any problems with these dumbbells. And that they don't need any inventory here. And that may be true. But I do wish that they would keep just some parts. It doesn't need to be a lot. It can be a couple dozen of these on hand in the states if something were to happen or in in, in any of the countries that they're selling in the uh, i so i i said okay let's pretend that i broke this can i get replacement parts and they said yes absolutely uh just you know contact us let us know and we'll send it to you so they did they pr we pretended that it's broken and they sent extra gears with the shafts and they sent the tube with the one and the inner portion. So this is all, uh, you know, the new replacement part for the AD28. And they have this for the other ones as well. So in the event that you have a problem with the dumbbells, not only can you take them apart, but you can contact the company and get replacement parts. So that's that's cool. That's, that's great. I, I am super happy that they went through that exercise with me just to show me that they can indeed provide replacements. Okay, now, <laughs> this, I want to cover something that I think is extremely important. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about dropping dumbbells or that they drop dumbbells and what's going to happen and are they going to break. Snowed advertises these as being able to be dropped from something like three feet which is a pretty significant difference or, or distance, right? It, if you're six feet tall and you're holding these in your hands and you drop them to the floor, that would be about half the distance to the floor. 
what would happen to these dumbbells. So I'm going to take this base off and I want to talk about what that means. And I, to do that, I've got some plates. So we've got here three plates from, from the ADA. Okay. And what happens to the, the dumbbell when you drop it? Um, let me just extend this. I should have done this before. One moment, I'll be right with you. Okay. So, I had to extend the rods. <laughs> what happens when you are holding this dumbbell? Remember, it's got this play in it, right? And these, let's see if I can put that there like that. These plates interlock using dovetails, okay? On the top and the bottom of each plate. So when they are oriented in the up position like this, and you drop this to the floor, okay? So this gets dropped to the floor. These are all going to jam upward, right? The floor is going to hit right here and jam these plates upward. That is okay in the sense that they're all, oop, let me, let me flip this around here so that you can actually see, cause I've got it upside down, sorry. Here we go. Now I've got it correct. The floor is going to jam up like this and hit here and try to shove these plates off of your dumbbell. Now you would think, oh, there must be a lot of stress on this rod. Not really. The plates are all dovetailed. So each plate jams into the plate next to it. So in practical terms, let me take two of these. You can see this plate jams up into that plate like that. And this one into the next one, into the next one, until finally it jams into this one, right? So that means that when this hits the floor like this, when this hits the floor like this, these plates are the structural component that together takes the impact from the floor. There's very little impact on this rod itself. It's all gonna be felt by the plates, the, the majority of that force. However, however, if you are holding the dumbbells upside down, that's no longer true. If you happen to pick your dumbbells up upside down, now these plates are free to slide out of each other. Let me put this aside for a moment here. A little awkward working on this table, but now these plates can move out of each other, right? So if, if you have your dumbbell upside down and the floor hits these plates, it's now going to put all of the force on the rod. Let me use this marker here. So now all the force is going on that rod. It wants to break the rod when the dumbbell's upside down. That is not true this way. When the dumbbell's right side up, this is under very little force. It's mostly going to be these plates locking into each other. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I think, I think, and I will test it later this year. I think that the snowed will be fine being dropped right side up with the number window up. I think that these will bend or break if you drop this dumbbell with the window, the number window facing down. So just be very, very aware of that. Uh, if you do happen to drop them, if it's accidental, you're going to have no say 
over what way these things hit the ground. If they happen to hit in a way that is upside down, well, it could indeed damage your rods. But in that case, you know, contact the company and say you need a couple of these and they'll ship out a couple of these for you. Now, they happen to do it at uh, just the cost of shipping, which is awesome. Uh, I don't know how long they will continue to do that or if they will do it for everyone. I would imagine on a case-by-case -case basis, they're going to decide what happened, how did it happen, and you know who's paying for the parts and for the shipping for the parts. But at least for the first uh, year, I think, I'm pretty sure it's a year, but for the um, there's a portion of time it is under warranty and they will just uh, provide replacement parts if it's needed. I don't see the plates breaking, but I definitely see this potentially breaking if you drop it upside down. The, and that's true no matter if it's this kind, nylon covered steel or the solid aluminum. Um, okay, I think I, I think I covered everything for uh, this Snowed AD80. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Later this year, I hope to do some drop testing, not to prove that they can be dropped. Uh, in, in My goal with drop testing is to show you what the potential damage is. Will it be damaged? And if so, how? Adjustable dumbbells shouldn't really be dropped. Even the Pepin Fast, if you ask the folks at Pepin, it's an expensive dumbbell and it's well built. I can't wait to get my hands on one and take a closer look at it, but I would not drop those dumbbells. And they would probably say, don't drop our dumbbells. You know, so adjustable dumbbells aren't really made to be dropped. But I do want to show you, if you do drop it, here's the potential damage that it could cause or not. You know, maybe it survives. And uh, I'll try to do that later this year with some of the popular dumbbell models and see what we get for some results. Um, so if you found this video helpful, uh, I hope you'll hit the like button. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, I'd love it if you'd uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll have some uh, more content coming up in the weeks ahead. Thank you for watching and I hope you all have a great evening.